here with the Tom Joyner Foundation, and I am with the President and CEO of Houston Tillotson University, Dr. Larry L. Irvin. How are you doing, Dr. Irvin? I'm doing well today. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And so as President and CEO of the university, what have been your goals? Well, one of the major goals has been to ensure a prominent place in higher education for Houston Tillotson University. We're situated in one of America's fastest growing and popular cities, and also in a town with several universities, including the wealthiest public university in the country. We have had to carve out our niche and make sure that we do a good job at all of those things that we undertake to do for our students, and that is a special niche for us. And then HT is the oldest institution of higher learning in Austin. That's correct. And so what makes HT unique? Well, HT is unique for several reasons. Going back to the origins of the institution, with one starting in Dallas and one starting here in Austin, and uh, having come together in 1952 to form one university, bringing the heritage of two different institutions together. Uh, That in itself makes it very special. But being a prominent in uh, the establishment of a black middle-class community in Austin is another thing that has made Houston Tillotson very special. And I think over the years we've had diversity in our enrollment that has really been increased over the last 14 or so years with tremendous growth in our Hispanic and uh, uh, international and Anglo uh, student populations. And so with these diverse populations, what has been the impact on the university? It has created a much richer learning environment and I think a deeper appreciation of the different cultures from around the world. We've been fairly intentional in making sure that there are opportunities for students to experience the cultures of the different countries represented student population. That has served us well, been able to increase the number of students who do study abroad and uh, gain a better appreciation of what it's like to live in sometimes less affluent and sometimes more affluent cultures but certainly to have a a broader appreciation of the global environment that they'll be working in once they finish the university. And the university has made news with the Dumpster Project. Probably more news about uh, the Dumpster Project than anything else in recent (laughs) history. That has uh, just the the sheer nature of the project has really garnered the attention of the public. But I think beneath the, the notion of a professor living in a dumpster for a year is the point that is being made by the experiment that we uh, really are using many more resources than are necessary to maintain a a quality environment. Now, not everybody, most people will not want to live in a dumpster, but uh, that uh, the project uh, draws attention to the sustainability efforts that we ought to be undertaking in our communities, and it brings particular attention to the efforts uh, that can be undertaken in an African-American community. Most of the efforts uh, in uh, climate control and sustainability have not focused on minority communities. So uh, this gives us an opportunity to make a statement for our community as well. And have there been any awards or honors for this project? We have. Uh, the project has taken on the name uh, under Professor Dumpster. That's uh, Jeff uh, Wilson who joined us uh, on the faculty, and he serves as, as a dean of the University College but we call the project uh, Green is the New Black. Uh, the students have been in competition uh, in a number of venues around the country. Uh, most notable was the uh, competition in Detroit, sponsored by the Ford Motor Company, in which our students uh, garnered uh, first place. So we're extremely proud of that. And just uh, last week, students won a competition for Green is the New Black in the Earth Day uh, competition here in Austin. Thank you.